Chance for speed and longer drives continues today, guys. All right, we're gonna go ahead and work with one of the best. Today, you get to join us for a lesson with long drive specialist, Lee Cox. We're gonna head down, we're gonna chase some speed, we're gonna change up the swing, and if you watch along right now, you're gonna hear everything that we worked on. All right, guys, then we headed back to the studio. Afterwards, I'm gonna help you understand why it's changed my game. You're gonna see some numbers, and we're gonna see how we stretch this out, guys. All right, but right now, jump in and enjoy the lesson. That one felt pretty flush though, the other one I felt different. Yeah. Patterns for different players, yeah? And then as your hands move downwards, you start to get a, a fair bit of uh, hands outwards, yeah? Mm -hmm. You accrue a lot of right uh, side to bend that way, yeah? So a movement to the right, uh, potentially by having less of that, you might be able to hit it further, you might not. Mm -hmm. So left side bend at the top, stays in a bit of left side bend, spine neutralised, goes into right side bend, but as soon as you start your downswing, mm -hmm. you're at the left side extension of the ribcage, right side bend, it happens far too early there, yeah? because that's in front of your hand. So the path was already good, I'm going to tell you what the vertical shaft plane was there, yeah? this point and then when it returns it's very very normal common yeah. to have it at that point so that will give you good delivery positions yeah mm -hmm. yeah so super speeds are, are good for building up speed yeah and then the bridge to actually hitting the ball would be using a pad here yeah now it's a pretty strong pad this so you can hit this as hard as you want okay so let's just do it um uh, it, in a perfect world, that would have Velcro on the face and it would stick, but it hasn't. So we're just going to go with this and try and up the ante a little bit. Uh, I like the pre-movement before you're hitting it, which yeah. you'll see with very fast players. They're just yeah. trying to get everything going, yeah? yeah? So let's see how that fast swing looks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try and lengthen this out a little bit further. Yeah. I was interested to see um, where the club was going to get, how your foot was going to respond, and as you said, that left foot has definitely done what a little bit. Yeah, left foot. The ankle's worked in a better way. The the back of your foot's actually starting to work more outwards. See that as it comes, because mm -hmm. of your knee action, it's better. Okay. Still stepped inwards a little bit, yeah? Yeah. Left side's still a bit high and that's a bit narrow, but we're going to crack away at that back swing for a bit longer, yeah? Yeah. It's called a lag popper. This is probably the, this is the best one I've seen of these, yeah? Now, what you do is you grip it, but you keep it on the grip end. Mm -hmm. You don't let it drop. And then as you're going to move to the top, you're just going to make it to the top. You want to give it a good bang as you get to the top, Michael, yeah? Don't worry too much about your feet, just let it happen naturally for you. Good. Here we go. So get it to the same place, then work that to the top. It's much heavier, yeah? Yeah, it's all through the ribs, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway. So we're trying to get some speed in the motion of the club to the top. Plus just lengthen things out a little bit, yeah? You really feel that pulling you. As we're moving Michael about, we're starting to get things moving about. Him moving side to side at set up, I love. He's just getting the whole thing going. He's priming his system, ready to go, and he's going to pull the trigger. Lovely movement of his mass off to the right earlier. He starts going up, up, up. Head's going up, body's going up, hands travelling further. So already that's a much better looking backswing than you had at the beginning. Mm -hmm. From a different discipline, more of a long drive backswing. Yeah. Uh, left heel still got a little bit more to go from a, a okay. perspective of turning. But I really much prefer this motion here. You're a little bit less right with leaning. Uh, legs coming in nicely. Hand pass now got to the top. Yeah. Lost the right. That's really good, mate. That yeah. heel can come a bit more. Okay. okay. So when I'm lifting that heel, where where would the knee go? Slightly back or just down? Yeah, so that's a good question actually. Uh, both. Yeah. Both, yes, yeah, so that's a really good question. Mate. So if you look at um, if you look at um, I'll sort of get this Swiss ball here. So I mean it's all relevant to the hip joint as well, isn't it? So if, if I'm moving my leg in here. It's moved inwards from where it started, but it's in external rotation relevant to my pelvis. That's moved externally, but relevant to my pelvis, this is internal, yeah? yeah. My knee will add flex, 
so it's going outwards, but it's also moving in behind the ball. Yeah. So if we just get you here for a little bit and just allow that to move in a touch. Yeah, it's better. Oh, yes. Love that. Yeah. Love that. the body parts doing it. So I'm going to shift my mass across to my right leg. I'm going to get really heavy, then I'm going to start to push up. Yeah. So two things, I'm at my heaviest, and my mass is going upwards, and I get to this point here and I'm going to start to drop. Mm -hmm. And that drop needs to be unweighted. So when you see people dropping, they've quite often practiced these big deep squats, yeah? It's not how far you drop, it's how fast you drop. Okay. The reason I love that last swing is Made that great movement up and you really drop down fast. Right. That would change the look of your hips and your body motion as you go down. So they're now going to start to go downwards in the left side. Where earlier we saw you going where? Yeah. Upwards is the wrong way around. There's no drop into that. If you look at that left side of your rib cage, which earlier was going where? Yeah. Upwards. As you now get to the top, it's actually going where? Yeah. That's what I was trying to get there. Yeah, left foot now stamps down as your right heel generally comes up. So that normally would go down as that would come up for real speed. But we have some down element there, mm -hmm. which is great, yeah? Let's call it a mass accelerator up or down, yeah? Basically, you can stick under your left foot. Yeah. Uh, as we're going to swing here to the top, we're going to go start low. I'm going to stretch where? High, and then do what? I'm going to drop my mass, so this is me becoming unweighted, yeah? So from here, back, back up, and down, up, down. So it's the big rise, then I can get the drop, yeah? Good. See yourself in the mirror there, Michael, take the big climb. Dropping that mass, then we can get a bigger force on the handle on the way down, yeah? Good. Bang, that's it, lovely movement. The shape of the hand path has a bearing, especially with driver and generating speed, and iron as well, and the force you can apply. Mm -hmm. So it's called a throw off drill, and basically what you're trying to do from the top to halfway down here is you're trying to throw this off, yeah? Right. You're almost trying to knock my machine over, yeah? Now, Quite often you find your um, lead shoulder goes up a bit, but it's the hand path I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. Can I get it moving outwards more? So at that point in the swing, it's further away. Yeah, done. Okay. Good. That's really good, mate, yeah? Okay. And there is your window of uh, speed. So your window of speed is done by about there. It's P5.5. It's generally where max hand speed is, yeah? Mm-hmm. So it's really giving you a really good line of your hands, shape-wise, length-wise. It's really good, yeah? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's bringing exactly the same feeling in, huh? Yeah. It's even wider, that one, yeah? Uh, you was a bit flawed because you, uh, you let your left foot dance off a bit early mm -hmm. there, yeah? It's a bit of a cheap one, that, but it doesn't really <laughs> matter. Look at, the, look at the hips drop there, mate, yeah? Yeah. Good. Like that. <laughs> away from you, quite often can sit on the back foot, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? But it would be even more powerful if you stepped in where? Yeah, me. Then I can make it unweighted, then I can make it more powerful as you drop in. So let's do that with a little bit of a step yeah. now. Yeah, me. So you just start with your left foot back near your right. So left foot behind the yellow line. Good. Swing. Good. And that should give you even more force. Feel that? Yeah, it's the first time I really thought about the unweighted side. Yeah, yeah. But the movement forward and the travel there from your left shoulder in space should add more speed to yeah, that as well, well, yeah? Yeah, okay, just a little bit of a grip. Yeah. It's good. Should give you a nice transition. And that, what we're trying to do by moving that way as we move in is just trying to get your your left shoulder applying more of a force on the club as well, yeah? And obviously you're, you're getting unweighted by stepping into it, yeah? Two more have a break. Six, six. 
So you're sitting comfortably there, I think, you? Yeah, yeah, I feel... Yeah, I feel like I can get some more out of it. Change of direction's happening yeah, at the right time. Yeah, yeah the, the unweighted drop's good, yeah? Yeah. Width of your hands better. Yeah. I know it wasn't your fastest swing, it's actually a pretty good looking swing, then you can pound up from that, yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, there's still more work we can do on the way down from there, but that looks like a better mm -hmm. position in regard to your legs and your arms coming yeah. down, yeah? Okay. okay, now go crazy, yeah? I bit it well enough, it wasn't a miss it. Yeah. So, um, Fastest swing today. I'll be honest, I was I was happy at 107, 108. Yeah, so that's, a, that's, that's a serious, yeah. that's a sway, isn't it? That was, that was a seriously good number, yeah? Yeah, that's good. Transition was excellent. I mean, that's, yeah. One ten and maybe you can get one ten and a week. It's your doing. The lovely, the lovely priming, ready to go. Yeah. Much more aggressive. You were moving back and up there. Big bang down. I didn't strike it, but I thought it was far. I thought it was a good number. Yeah, for the, like, say, the last few, I've had that. Proper yeah. Now, so. yeah. Yeah. Well, see, so that's quite an easy number for you. Now, remember, we started at one hundred and one. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the height? One hundred eight point seven was the yeah, fastest yeah, we got. Yeah, Good, and you can almost hear the club whistling back. Yeah. I would have said reasonable again, yeah, very good. That drill's a winner, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I like, um, I didn't tell you to do this, I love the shuffling around, priming, ready to go. I think that's really good. Yeah. We moved your mass off, yeah? Mm. Okay, but then we got to start to get it unweighted, yeah? So that, that rise through, the things that really worked for us, three things for me. I've got you on the Swiss ball, yeah. got your legs working nicely. Yeah, I've got you on the homemade DIY gadget, here you go. We've got some rise and fall out of that, yeah, so. The weight itself, then unweight, good, love that. Remember, it's the speed of the unweight and not the amount of it. Perspective. We, we did look at that from a long drive. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw that the path can get a little bit right. You get the shaft working, uh, you go into straight left side extension at the wrong time. This drops the club under the right forearm. You then end up with a big high vertical shaft plane. You now know what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the club gets trapped inside you yeah, and you get those blocks. So I said that there is a point when the club does get this side of your hands and we changed that earlier. Left shoulder felt lower for longer. This felt a bit more on top that way. As it happens, as we went on the lesson and we talked about unweighting, I actually think you'd do that anyway, yeah? Because mm -hmm. you're not doing that anymore, yeah? Definitely got the feel of the end, yeah. Now, what, what worked very well from that lesson, from a speed point of view, you got up to, what did we get up to, 108, 109 with the 6 on? 8.7. Okay. So, you got very close to the magic 110 with a 6 on, mate, which is a seriously good number. Um, uh, I like your own prime, and I didn't tell you to do that. You started to move around. I really like your, and then that you got a real nice little um, sort of counter move going of this bend in and pull back. You did that naturally, athletically. So just keep doing that. I think that's yeah. terrific. I like the way you move your mass off the ball from here. First thing we started to do from the speed point of view was that I've got this sort of heavy popper. Mm. Yes, yeah, and. Um, if an old dog like me, but it really starts to stretch the system out a little bit, and we just got a little bit more turn. Got yeah. you on the Swiss ball, got your legs working nicely. Yes. Um, that was fine. But then the, the sort of the big things that made the difference today, and the, that was just because we were doing more of a sort of long drive go here, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this sort of DIY uh, razor dropper 
The device worked brilliantly, mate, because you started then to raise. Yeah. Then you got the sense of unweighting. Yes, yeah, like, the hip. Yeah, yeah the where you said that you feel my whole trail side's been extended oh. upwards, opened in their rib cage. I thought it was terrific as a, as a feeling. And then we did two other things. We got the throw off drill <coughs> going off from here, uh, where we know that you've got this window of opportunity to move your hands fast between there and there. Mm -hmm. So we were throwing that off really hard. The only thing we had to be careful with in doing that, you then didn't make it a back footed action. But then the actual bit of magic came when we put the two together. So we went throw off and step. And once you put those two together of throwing off and stepping forward, yeah. you got that into a really good speed. I mean, then that took you to that next bit. You're up at sort of 108.7 is the fastest And you got a driver up at 120, what is it? 128.6 was... Yeah, it was a, re a really decent sense. number to get yeah, going off, yeah? Yeah, no, awesome. Yeah. Good. No, I like it all, man. I think, uh, so def definitely that. That's the first time I've really got that. Yeah. No, my back's been filled there. That's Good. So I think, you know, you know, 110 with a six arm won't take you very long. Mm -hmm. I said a month, eight months, you might get near there in three weeks. Okay. So guys, we're back at Driven Studios, and yes, that was pretty awesome. Really cool guy, incredible knowledge, and really did match up to the understanding of the body, Ground, force, mechanics, it all made a whole lot of sense, guys, right? It's good to work on the game. It's good to link the body and actually spend some time on it, guys, all right? So two big drills that I really took away. Number one was gonna be the band in terms of the backswing rotation, and it's the speed that really looked overlooked before, okay? So rotating the hips fast, getting into spinal extension, and really getting to the top with some purpose has made a huge difference. That was just a a light band under the lead leg, up to the top of the swing with speed, trying to stretch the band and create some real tension. All right, guys, it's that power to the top, big deal. Okay, the second one was a step to swing. This is something that we do in part of our training. It's one of our drills that we use often, but it was a little bit of a different thought process. And that was a case of getting tall in the back swing and then unweighting the body down into that lead side. Now, I've always struggled with that lead leg extension through the ball, but the thought of actually becoming weightless, kind of like we do with the Olympic weightlifting, the clean, made a whole lot of sense, all right? That weightlessness down into the ground, pushing out and against, got us going on. Leg action has improved already, and it's big changes in the swing, guys, all right? So, first time testing out the long driver, we got some good numbers. Real good consistency, 127, 128 club head speed, not where we want it to be, but a busy few days as always, guys, all right? And it's always up and down. The small percentages of performance can be affected by a whole bunch of different things, all right? But very consistent in terms of club path, which is more neutral. Obviously, we want to be from the inside to max out the launch angle. However, at times before, we got way too far from the inside. So this was much more manageable, much more consistent. Getting some good ball speeds out there, very much around the 190 mark. We want to be getting 195, we want to be getting 200, guys, all right? So, again, in terms of the swing, I'm really looking to create as much height going back as possible with speed, with rotation, and then compress down into that lead side, all right? These are not new things, but again, using those drills, using the knowledge from the lesson has helped me to understand it in a completely different way and give me some focus on the swing, all right? So far too often, getting a whack away at the balls today, moving forwards we've got something to really focus on okay so the next landmarks are going to be 195 ball 135 club head speed and then 200 ball speed is close guys it's real close okay so hope you took a bunch away from this we are going to be working more closely on these drills on these mechanics and helping you understand what you can do to hit the ball further to create more speed and to golf strong guys eh? because that's what we do and you know as soon as we get to those numbers you're gonna hear all about it, guys. All right, so keep on on the work. Make sure you do what you need to do to have your body in a position so you can handle these kind of speeds and improve your output so you can play better golf and you can improve your fitness. To do so, get the Golf What app. Make sure you've updated if you already have it and subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, Golf Strong. Fuck you too, man. <laughs> uh, that's what I was thinking.